so we've got the line work, and the image works pretty well, but we want to add some tone and a little bit of shadow to help it read even better. And the way that we'll do that is by going back into the Rhino file and doing a couple quick renderings, um, nothing too fancy, uh, but then doing a lot of processing in Photoshop to make it, to make it look better. And I'm just going to start with a really straightforward rendering, um, no shadow, no lights. Uh, and just take what we've got here. Just want to make sure I've got a couple things. I'm going to right click on the render properties. And then I'm going to turn off the curves and ISO curves so that it's pure tone and the only line work is coming from the image that's already in Photoshop. And then I also want to make sure, right click on that again, my resolution is set pretty high. And now I'll create this rendering. Actually, another good thing to do always just make sure that you've got the right view just by typing in the view then taking the rendering so now I'll go to save just save it to my desktop and then I want to do a second view or a second rendering same view but this time with shadow and what I'll do is I'll turn on the base and then I'm going to turn on I've got this light layer so when I turn that on, what shows up is there's a, a sun that's in here. And I'll, I'll hide it for right now, and then I'll just rebuild it. The way you can bring that in is you go under the lights menu. And there's point lights and so forth. And I just recommend doing a directional light. It basically works like the sun. Uh, and you bring that in, and you just establish a direction. And you'll notice down here in the front view that it's actually coming straight across and we want that to kind of point down on the object so I'm just going to rotate it point it up and then in plan I can rotate it around and um, it doesn't really matter where it is in position in relation to a surface you're really just establishing a direction so let me, I'm actually going to erase that one and show the one that I had before so this is the light that I've been using and I'm just going to come back, set my view. Um, the base is going to allow the shadow to show up on something, because if that wasn't there, there wouldn't be anything for the shadow to cast onto. And uh, I'll create another rendering. And you'll notice that the shadows are really heavy. You lose a lot of detail. Uh, and that's actually okay, because the... Um, the line work is going to help out with that. But one thing that we do want to change is we want to get rid of this base because that gray tone is going to be kind of tricky to eliminate when we're in Photoshop. We don't really want that to show up. So one thing I can do is if I right click on render properties and change the ambient light from black to dark gray. It's going to lighten up the whole image and it's actually going to eliminate the base or it's going to make it white so that now we're still getting the shadows and everything's kind of the tone is, has been lightened up but we can adjust that in Photoshop but the key is to get that face to disappear so now I'll save this Call that number three. and then when I come into Photoshop I'm going to open up both of those images and what I'll do is I'll take this one I'm just going to select everything cut it and then bring it over onto the other one and paste it straight on top. And so you'll see that I've got one image on top of the other. And what I want to do is take this, take the background, select all, cut, and paste. So now I've got these two layers are independent, and then I've got a background. So I've got a layer with shadows, a layer without shadows. And you'll notice that what I can do is I can then well, I can do a few things. One is I'm going to adjust the, the overall tone of this by going up to Image, Adjustments, go to Auto Contrast. So that will give me nice dark blacks. And then if I adjust the transparency of the image on top, I can actually make the shadows start to appear and I can have a kind of fine-tuned sort of adjustment to it that I can get immediate feedback from rather than having to do it through the rendering software. And now what I want to do is drop some line work on top of this and create an overall kind of cohesive image. So I'll come back into this, do a copy, and then a paste. And so now it drops it on top. And you'll notice that the size is a little off. 
And the first thing, the main uh, key to this, is that we want to be able to see through this, but we don't want to do it by adjusting its opacity, because that's going to give us a really faint image. We'll do it by changing its layer property from normal to multiply. And what multiply is going to do is it's going to make anything that's white become transparent. And I'm going to change my layer. Yeah, no, actually I'll leave auto select off so that, that way when layer 3 is active I know I'm grabbing my my image. And now I can just go and scale it so that it fits. And this will just take a little bit of trial and error. Trying to get everything to match up and then nudging it using the arrow keys. That looks pretty good. Sometimes it takes a couple tries. Just a little bit bigger. Okay, I'll call that pretty good. I'll call that good enough for right now. And so what I've got is I've got the line work on top. It's set to multiply. And then below I've got two layers, one with shadow, one without. And I can adjust their transparencies to try to make the shadows become darker or lighter, change the overall tone. I can lighten everything up and still get the shadows. And you can really start to get the sort of immediate feedback that you don't really get when you're doing a, a render using the software. And the line work helps the geometry read, but you still get the great kind of tonal effect from the shadows and uh, the renderings. Um, so this is the basic technique, and um, that's it.